Um, um, we talked about continuity, uh, and here were the. Oh, okay, <laughs> go back and. Uh, yeah, okay. Okay, talked about continuity last week, right? Of course, we had a couple questions on the quiz today about continuity. Uh, here are the conditions, right? For a function to be continuous, three conditions have to be met. Number one, the function must be defined at the given point. Number two, the limit must exist. And the limit and the function value must be the same. So if those three conditions are satisfied uh, at any point in a function's domain, then the function is, or, any, or for any real number, uh, then the function is continuous at that point. Um, but there is a further uh, modification to this idea, and it was in the homework, but I didn't talk about it in class, so I do want to get this on the record. Uh, that's the idea of continuity from left to right. So a function is totally continuous if all three of those conditions are met, but we can refine this idea, continuity from a direction. The only difference is when we talk about the limits, we're talking about the one-sided limit. So instead of talking about the limit existing as a whole, we just mean the limit from the right exists. And instead of the limit as a whole being equal to the function value, the limit from the right is equal to the function value. And similarly for the left. Uh, again, the exact same definition as before, but instead of talking about the limit in general, we talk about the two-sided limits, or the two, the two one-sided limits. Um, and so this does allow us to talk about cases in which continuity fails, but it does apply from one direction or the other. Uh, so here's a couple of examples. Sample A here. Uh, the question is, is this function continuous? Uh, and if it's, well, well, <laughs> is this function continuous? And if it fails to be continuous in the broad sense, is it continuous from one of the two directions? Um, and this is similar to a problem we had on the quiz, so we should be able to go through this pretty quickly. Uh, um, first of all, how do we, if this function is not continuous, where would the problem be? It to be at one, the transition point. Each of the two separate functions, the linear function on top and the constant function on the bottom, those are continuous everywhere. So if there is a problem here, it's going to occur at one. So let's see uh, what happens. Uh, and uh, so I guess the first question is, uh, what is f of 1? The first question for continuity, is the function defined at the point? What's f of 1 for this example? 0. So f of 1 is down here on the lower branch. right? That's where the equality holds. So f of 1 is equal to 0. Okay. So that's one of the conditions that we'll have to verify or we'll come back to. Uh, question two, what's the limit as x approaches 1 from, say, the right-hand side? Okay, if I'm approaching from the right-hand side, which one of the two branches am I on? Top. Right, this is the case where x is greater than 1, so the fact that I'm coming from the right means that x must be bigger. So I'm using the upper branch, which can now be evaluated directly. It's a polynomial function, so its limit can be found through direct substitution. Okay. Uh, and then uh, what about uh, the other limit? Uh, in order for uh, this function to be continuous, then it's going to have to end up being that the two limits turn out to be the same. Okay, if I'm approaching from the left, now which branch am I on? Bottom. All right, now x is less than 1, so that puts me down here on this branch. So what's the limit for the left-hand approach? Zero. Um, so now I can answer, so, and so what does that tell me about the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? does not exist. Okay, so is f continuous at 1? Is f continuous? No, right? The limit didn't exist. That's one of the conditions that have to hold. The limit must exist. And so uh, this condition here, this implies that f itself is not continuous at x equals 1. But is it continuous from one of the two directions? And now I'm going to compare. So uh, the left and right limits both existed. Uh, so we verified the first condition, f of a was defined. 
uh, both left and right limits both exist, the question is, is either one of them actually equal to the function value? Yeah, that one is. So, uh, from the fact that, uh, so now we can qualify, but the limit as x approaches 1 from the left hand side is equal to the function value at 1 and so we do have one-sided continuity. F is continuous from the left. Okay, so uh, in particular for these jump, uh, jump these branch functions. Oh yeah, yeah, I should have asked that. What kind of discontinuity is this? Right, gap, uh, a jump, removable, infinite. Which one? Jump. Right, I can see my branches are jumping from one value to the other. So f is not continuous at one. It has a jump discontinuity there. It's very common to see this for these branch, uh, the, these uh, gap functions, uh, branch functions, to see that we do have continuity from one side, and it depends on where we place the equality. Uh, you know, if the equality had been included up here on this upper branch, then it would have been continuous from the l from the right. But I included the equality on the lower branch, so that gave me continuity from the left. So this function is not continuous as a whole, but it does have continuity coming from the left. Um, and one more example of that that I didn't want to mention is uh, the, the square root function. Uh, is the square root function continuous at zero? And uh, if it's not, is it continuous from one direction or the other? Okay, so to answer questions about continuity, I need to verify the three conditions. Number one, is the function defined at zero? What is f of zero equal to? Zero. So f of zero is just the square root of zero, which is zero. Okay, good. Um, what's the limit as x approaches zero from the right-hand side? Zero. Right, this is a, again, uh, this function. Uh, it, the operation of the radical we talked about, this is um, uh, one of the uh, operations that the limit passes through. So as I come in from the right hand side, x is greater than zero, uh, I can just do the direct evaluation, zero is going to be the answer. Okay, here's the tricky part. What's the limit as x approaches zero from the left? What's different, huh? Why not? Yeah, because it's not real. If I'm approaching from the right, x is greater than zero. And that means, you know, or in other words, x is a positive number. That's fine. But if I'm approaching from the left, that means that x is less than zero. That means x is a negative number. And the real number system, square roots of negative numbers, aren't defined. So x being negative implies that f of x is not defined itself. It's defined at zero, but it's not defined for any value less than zero. And that's why the limit from the right, or the limit from the left, does not exist, because I can't make the approach. There are no values on the left-hand side for which I can observe uh, that uh, sequence of values approaching some number, because none of the values on the left are defined, at least in the real system. Okay, so is f continuous at zero? No. Because, for, I mean, from this, now these two conditions, once again, the usual thing. These two things are not the same. One of them is zero, one of them doesn't even exist. So in this case, from this we can conclude that uh, the limit, the big limit, doesn't exist. Since the left and right limits aren't the same. Um, but is it continuous from one of the two directions? Yeah, right here. I do get the limit existing from the right and the limit being equal to the function value. So even though the limit as f approaches uh, at, uh, zero from the, uh, zero as a whole doesn't exist, this function does have one-sided limit. Oh, and by the way, this means that the uh, f is not continuous. at zero. But 
I do have the uh, extra condition mint. I do have this as x approaches zero from the right. I do get the uh, e equivalence of the limit and the function value. So that implies that x f is continuous from the right. Okay, so I didn't talk about that last week. It was in the homework. I hope everybody figured that out. She went through it. I don't know. Maybe I'll go ahead and reopen those homeworks. Uh, the one on continuity. I'll go ahead and reopen that because uh, we didn't talk about that last week. But I, as I was looking through that, it was there. Uh, so I assume you'd seen that already. But if you hadn't uh, seen the, exactly how it worked itself out, there you go. Okay. Okay.